We're supposed to be making that choice now, taking a stand now. Do we believe that God's word is inerrant and true? Do we believe in God's righteous standard? Do we hate what God hates? Yes, we need to love well. That should never change. We need to love what God loves. But have we really considered what God hates? Hey everyone, this is Wanda Alger and today is Tuesday, October 15. I have a pretty hard word to share today. Uh, to be honest, it's something that I've been holding for quite a while. I have believed for quite a while, but have not felt released to say it in the way that I'm saying it today. Uh, but I need to give credit to two individuals that inspired me and empowered me to, to put this out. Uh, one was because of a video reel that I saw posted on the X platform. I don't know this pastor, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny Artavanis, I think, of Stonebridge Bible Church in Brentwood, Tennessee. This little video clip has been making the rounds, and he is from a Bible-based uh, church, and he had a very uh, powerful message, I guess, on uh, politics and, and the church, but he made a statement, you cannot be a Christian and vote for the Democratic Party. That's what this reel started out with. But then he explains it. There's a context to it. But he was very bold uh, in saying some things that he did. And it it's getting people's attention. And it really struck me as uh, it had a lot of truth in it. And I thought, we I need to write this down. This needs to be uh, stated again. Uh, so, you know, power to him. I'm putting the link below to his entire message that's posted on YouTube. I have not watched the entire message. I just only saw the reel. So, but you can check it out for yourself. The other person that inspired this uh, showed up in a dream the other week, and that was Lance Wallnow. Uh, now, I don't know Lance. I met him once uh, at a prayer event a number of years ago. I used to follow him back in 2016 during that election because he was on the front lines uh, of prophetic uh, intel. He was one of the first ones that started talking about President Trump as a Cyrus. And uh, anyway, in this dream, he shows up to me and he has been taking notes and he makes a statement about uh, a lot of churches along the East Coast that are operating in witchcraft. And he's very concerned about this. And so he looks at me and he says, Wanda, you need to have a dream about this. <laughs> so even in the dream, I'm thinking, well, I can't quite make dreams happen, but OK. Uh, but he had obviously been doing research and, and this was very much on his heart and mind. So when I, I woke up, I, I asked the Lord, are, are you trying to get my attention about something? What is this? And uh even in terms of witchcraft operating in churches, that's a pretty strong and bold statement. So I even asked the Lord, how could that happen? Well, that's what birthed then this word that I'm going to read to you. Okay, so I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk about it. All right. But I titled this witchcraft in the church and voting the democratic agenda. Yes, that is a bold statement, but consider what is before us. More and more well-known Christian leaders are preaching ideas that directly contradict God's word. In trying to be more acceptable to the masses, seemingly good pastors are making choices and promoting agendas that are not only lead their, leading their congregations the wrong way, but are opening the door to demonic influence. On 1 Samuel 15, 23, it states, For rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. In God's eyes, rebelling against his word is the same thing as witchcraft, divination. To presume upon his character is wickedness, iniquity, and even idolatry. Thus, to purposely and intentionally defy his laws is to collaborate with dark forces and wicked agendas. So to make this practical, consider the upcoming election and the choices before us. The two different platforms clearly delineate where each party stands concerning God's laws. Where one party seeks to uphold some basic truths of God's word, the other seeks to totally rewrite them. The differences have never been more stark. One party stands for life in the womb. The other claims the right to end that life. 
One party defends our God-given biological differences, while the other party seeks to upend the creation order and emasculate our children of their identity. One party defends the nuclear family and the role of parents, while the other party seeks to strip children away from home and make them servants of the state. In essence, one party is building their platform on everything that God hates. In Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, says there are six things that the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. Not only does God hate the shedding of innocent blood, he hates those who plot against him through lies and deception. He hates those who divide families for evil gain and will heap judgment on those who harm his children. Jesus stated that in Matthew 18, 6. To try and circumvent this by promoting a twisted cult of inclusivity or a false ideology of compassion is ignorant at best and demonic at worst. Now, perhaps in past years, these truths were not as clear and any spiritual implications may have seemed too subjective or radical. Unfortunately, the demonic agenda at work in the governmental sphere has never been so center stage and blatant. What used to be deemed as merely political issues are now spiritual realities with serious and far-reaching consequences for years to come. As imperfect as the particular candidates may be, God's favor and blessing will rest on those who uphold his word and seek to maintain a righteous standard. For those who walk in the fear of the Lord and still believe that his laws are sacred and holy, the implications should be in plain view. The choice we make and the vote we cast will not be some subjective political move, but a powerful prophetic act that can either open the windows of heaven or unleash the hordes of hell. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As I said, this is a very strong word. Now I've put links below to several of the things that I cited, specifically the message uh, from Pastor Artavanis that you can watch. I also put below a comparison of party platforms put out by the Family Research Council. It's a PDF that you can download, and it does delineate both party platforms and where they stand on these particular issues. I'm also citing another message by my husband, Pastor Bobby Alger, that he preached at Crossroads uh, several weeks ago on dual citizenship. Now, he takes a different approach, but he looks uh, in the book of Acts as to the Apostle Paul. And if the Apostle Paul were here today, how would he speak to the church and voting? Very eye-opening. And he even references... Uh, another resource, uh, a ministry called Think Media, where he got some information, some resourcing. I'm putting that link below. And I'm going to put the link of the PDF to Bobby's sermon outline, his notes. So you can take a look at those notes, download it, print that out, and, and go watch his, his message because it will, too, arm you with some biblical foundations here, again, about Christians and our responsibility, our role in the governmental sphere, Okay. Uh, lastly, before we talk about this word, um, I wanted to let you know that uh, as a way to thank all of you who subscribe to my website, WandaAlger.me, uh, I am giving for a limited time a free PDF download, a seven-day corporate prayer outline that I created. It's about five pages long. I mentioned it in my last video. And it's something the Lord has directed me to put together to seek uh, the Lord uh, on behalf of those who are, are standing for healing. And I believe that the, it's going to require some corporate prayer. I, it's a word. And then I list seven days of prayer. If you are interested in doing this with your spouse, with a small group, with your church, this is available. If you go to wandaalger.me and subscribe, uh, you'll get my real-time alerts. You'll get my weekly newsletter. And uh, it will be included with that as a thank you. Okay. So what about this word? Now, let me let me qualify some things because it is a pretty strong word. Remember, this is a spiritual battle. And in making these statements, I am not demonizing people, but the agenda. You know, back in 2016, I saw the same dynamics at work 
and I posted a word comparing President Trump, at that time, candidate Donald Trump with Hillary Clinton. And I knew there was demonic agenda uh, behind Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Now, at that time, it was still somewhat veiled and it wasn't as clear. Now, in the last four years, there should be mo no mistaking what their agenda is. It is in plain view. They have written it. It is a part of their party platform. OK, so it's very, very clear. But it doesn't mean that everyone who is a Democrat is practicing witchcraft. That's not uh, what I'm saying at all. The whole point of this is, is to look at the spiritual realities. When we take a stand on certain ideologies and beliefs, it has implications in the spirit, okay? And again, witchcraft is a very strong term. So I'm not even suggesting uh, that these pastors who are woke, who are supporting uh, you know, that platform, that they are witches and warlocks or that they are purposely operating in witchcraft. Most of the time, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Most of the time, they have bought into this deception, this lie that they are somehow caring for people by being more inclusive and by, you know, opening their arms to everyone. They actually are blinded by the God of this age. And they think that they're doing the right thing, not knowing what they're opening up the door to, not only in their own lives, but in the lives of their churches. So this is why we need to be praying about it. And I, I feel like that's one of the reasons the Lord gave me, you know, the dream with Lance Walnow showing up is to, to get our attention that, no, this is, this is, this is what's happening in the spiritual realm. And, and we've got to wake up uh, to this, this reality. So, and which brings me to the point, even if you've seen some of the latest statistics that a lot of Christians are not even going to vote. Okay. And so I've, I've been asking the Lord, how, how do we write this thing? And it became very clear until you have a revelation of the spiritual battle, that there is a real devil, there is a real Satan, there is, you know, Lucifer, <laughs> there is a Luciferian agenda. Until you have a revelation that is real, you only see it as politics. I mean, unfortunately, that's a lot of what the younger generation, actually, I, I'm not, I don't even want to put it all on them. It's a mixed bag. But so many have not had that revelation. They only see it as political issue that is only dividing people. And the other thing that has happened is that some of these issues have become so personal, you can't see it through the fog. This is what happened when homosexuality came to the forefront in the church, is that even though we should have taken a very clear stand from the very beginning of what the Word of God said, unfortunately, it just takes a few good families to then have to confront this with a sibling, with a son or a daughter who has fallen into this trap. And because of our love for them and our desire to reach out to them, to see them saved, you know, it gets really sticky. It's no longer black and white. It becomes very gray. But those, those are the kinds of things that we have to learn how to work through that we don't have to compromise the truth. We don't have to compromise God's word in order to still love well, to know how to pray effectively, to, you know, to learn how to appeal to those who are blinded and who have fallen into these traps. Those are the skills that we have yet to acquire. But this is why it's become a slippery slope and we've given into this deception. It's because, yeah, we want to love other people and we want to accept them, but God's word should never be compromised. I mean, this was the lesson that King Saul in 1 Samuel, the passage that I cited, it's why he fell. There was a lot of presumption. He presumed upon God's favor on him. He presumed upon his position with the Lord that he could kind of decide how to, you know, wield uh, God's justice. He could be the arbiter of God's laws. Oh, it was very clear through the prophet Samuel. No, no. Uh, rebellion to God's laws, to his word. No, that's like witchcraft. Saul, you have just lost your right to become king. So th these are the realities that, that we have to have to have. Now, something interesting that happened is last night I had a very interesting dream. And I don't know if this is in response to my, my dream with, with Lance Wall now or not, uh, but it was about President Trump and Melania. Now, I've only had like two or three other dreams with President Trump. And unfortunately, last night, it, there was so much that happened. I woke up and I could not keep the pieces together. Uh, it was very fuzzy. And so I, I can't really go into a lot of detail, but there was one thing that was very clear. Number one, when I have dreams like this with, with you know public figures uh, or political figures, I know it's a call to pray, 
But in, in these dreams that I had last night, Melania was the one that was at the forefront. And I knew the Lord was saying, you need to pray for Melania. Now, if you've been watching the news, you may have heard that she recently put out her memoir, a book, citing her story, uh, very popular. But in that book, it comes out that she's pro-choice, unapologetically pro-choice. And it's caught a lot of people by surprise. Now, I found a, a recent interview that she did with The Guardian. And in her own words, she makes some statements. She said, it is imperative to guarantee that women have autonomy in deciding their preference of having children based on their own convictions, free from any intervention or pressure from the government. A woman's fundamental right of individual liberty to her own life grants her the authority to terminate her pregnancy if she wishes. Restricting a woman's right to choose whether to terminate an unwanted pregnancy is the same as denying her control over her own body. I have carried this belief with me throughout my entire adult life. Now, this is the first time that she's come out so clearly with this. And not only was it in a book, but she's even put out a, a recent little video reel emphasizing this. Now, uh, if you know her, her spirituality, she's she's Catholic. And, and I will say, I, I believe that the reason that I had this dream last night is the Lord is saying, we need to pray for Melania, obviously. This is very different from what her husband, Donald Trump, President Trump, the stand that he has taken. Now, here again, on this issue, uh, many Christians have been concerned with recent statements that President Trump has made in clarifying his position, which seems to differ a bit from what he had stated uh, in his first uh, term as president. And because when uh, confronted with the possibility of making a federal ban, he's saying, no, I wouldn't do that. Now, my personal belief is I've watched different interviews and as I have heard him clarify this, I believe one of the primary reasons that he has said that is that he knows our constitutional republic, the way that our government should be working, is that the laws are made by the people for the people. What has happened in recent decades is that the federal government has you know, weaseled their way into this position where now they are the ones who determine laws for the people. That's not even legal. It's not how it should be. If anything, yes, it should be a state by state issue. That's how it was originally set up, that the states govern the people. The federal government shouldn't be involved in this. So from that standpoint, I can understand why President Trump is saying that. He's doing it purely from a legal standpoint of how the system should be operating. And he's trying to set a precedent you know, for other things to follow. But uh, obviously, you know, it it waters down then the position for those of us who do believe, no, God's word is clear, what he has already said that, you know, about conception and a child in the womb from the point of conception is a life that needs to be protected. So obviously with Melania's, uh, you know, book that came out, Okay, it's obvious that they're not together. Now, you think about the timing of this a month before the election. The only thing I personally can figure is that they're possibly hoping that this might garner more votes. Because for those who might take a stand against President Trump because of his uh, position on abortion, to know now that his wife actually is pro-choice, okay, maybe that might bring some more people over. I don't know. Uh, regardless. I believe the Lord is saying we need to pray. Uh, Melania is a Catholic. And by her stance, it would seem uh, self-evident that her stance is not based upon her Catholic faith. <laughs> because if anything, Catholics and evangelical, evangelicals, that's one of the you know few things that we've agreed on, is the right to life. So her stance doesn't seem to be based upon her religious faith but much more on her own personal journey as a woman, okay? We need to pray for her that she has a revelation, okay? Uh, that, you know, authentic, authentic value is not in doing your own thing because as a believer in Christ, for true Christians, we realize our body is not our own. It's not my body, my choice. It's his, <laughs> and he's already made the choice. So all I can do is I have to surrender to that. And, you know, in these exceptional cases, which you know, again, can get very gray. Uh, we definitely need God's mercy in his grace and his wisdom to know what to do. So, you know, again, in looking at these party platforms and some of the things 
that have caused people to back away from God's standard. The, these are all dynamics that, that we have to have to be aware of. And it's very hard when talking with those who are on the fence or who have just thrown up their, their hands and said, I, I'm not going to get involved. The Lord is wanting to make it very clear if you're watching and if you're looking at things, if you're paying attention, it should be clear as to what the choices are before us. And, you know, many of us are wondering, is there even going to be an election? I don't know. But regardless, spiritually speaking, I believe what the Lord is doing right now is he is wanting us. We have to make a choice. Bottom line, you have to take a side. And when I say side, I'm taking either you stand on God's word and you uphold it or you don't. Again, that now see, this is how this is how a prophet would think. It's black and white. You know, you're either going to obey God or not. Obviously, there's a lot of questions and, and there's a lot of variables in each situation. But as the church, as the ecclesia of God, this is God's call to us. And this is what we have to pray for for church leaders, for these pastors who are now waffling on things and, and they're compromising God's word. I mean, they are opening gates. Leaders are opening gates. Political figures, they do open gates in the spirit by what they believe, by what they decide. And, and this is the reality that we have to take account for the choices that we make. We can't just throw up our hands and say, you know, it's impossible. You know, it's beyond me. <laughs> you know, everything that the Lord has been uh, putting before us things that we've walked through in the last number of years, it's all for the purpose of us taking our place, making the right choice. Remember my previous posts about how critical it is of our oneness and our unity in the spirit. That has power. So regardless of any election or not, we're supposed to be making that choice now, taking a stand now. Do we believe that God's word is inerrant and true? Do we believe in God's righteous standard? Do we hate what God hates? Yes, we need to love well. That should never change. We need to love what God loves. But have we really considered what God hates? And can we have the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit within us that we can operate in both at the same time? We can hate the sin. We can hate that demonic agenda but we can still love those who are blinded to it, who still haven't gotten it, who still don't see the light, who haven't connected the dots. This is what, this is what has to happen. You know, we, we've got to choose. So I have this word on my blog. I would encourage you to, to go there, wandaalger.me, print it out, consider it. Um, you know, I, I would suggest that in sharing this, it, it's very strong language. And I recognize that. Um, and again, we don't want to throw around this witchcraft idea suggesting that people are purposely wanting to walk in witchcraft, especially in the church. But Holy Spirit wants us to recognize the spiritual implications. We need to ask the right questions for those who don't see it to engage in conversations that will appeal to them. Do you know what God's word says about this? What does God's word say about this? We had a conversation the other day with someone on this very topic, and they were concerned with a family member who, you know, just wanted to believe in the in the Pope, that the Pope had the final word. And the question was, well, you know, do those that side with that, do they even know what scripture says? Do they know what the word of God says? This is the reality. The Lord's calling us back to his standard, that we we know what he says and that we can trust him. Even with those difficult situations, how this is going to look, how we're going to walk these things out, that we can trust him to show us the way. So I'd be interested in your comments below. If you've uh, walked into conversations like this, maybe how you have appealed to others, how you have seen others cross that, that barrier from dark into light, and they've seen that, and they've gotten that revelation of, of what God is trying to say. This is where our prayers need to be centered. And again, the links to all of these helps, I'm putting them below uh, in the video description. You can go to wandaalger.me uh, to get uh, the links here as well and this article. Let's be in prayer. We've got some critical weeks ahead. We've got to choose rightly for the glory of God. Amen.